Many gastric bypass was a dual way gastric bypass. MGB is not to kill. This is we are here, we are brothers working for obesity surgery for the betterment. Let's look at the data. The healthcare cost is going up after Ruin Y and Ban. This is a recent publication, 30,000 patients studied by the American insurance company. They say after four years the Ruin Y health cost is coming up as compared to the non-operated patients. MGB is already there from last 17 years. And look at all the publications, all the reports from different corners of the world by different authors showing no internal hernia report as we talked about and no cancer in the MGB as yet. And the reported building reflux incidence is 1 to 2%. And if we look, where is the controversy? As we see, Professor Mason's loop, small stomach, inlet outlet were very close, and while the flux was high in this. But this loop connection is different. The anastomosis is placed way down. And just with the difference of one connection, it's not only one connection. The total physiology of the procedures has changed. In the MGB, you have a long loop of 200 centimeters, whereas in Ruan Y, you have 50 <coughs> centimeters primary limb. And that is probably the reason which explains why there is more metabolic power lying with the MGB. And we see a wide gastrogenostomy with the MGB as compared to a narrow gastrogenostomy of the Ruan Y. In MGB, the patient is eating into the jejunum. It's a kind of post-gastrectomy kind of state. Let us look into the cold gastric surgery. That is why MGB trains the patient to have a Mediterranean kind of diet. People have looked into the comparison of the malabsorption and the restriction of the Ruan Y. They have studied the protein carbohydrate absorption. And what they say, the restriction is 95% in Ruan Y and the malabsorptive power of Ruan Y is only 5%. As the time goes by, the restriction decreases significantly. And Ruan Y is primarily a restrictive procedure. Looking into the complications, Calvin Higa reporting a 10 years follow-up, 5% stenosis and 16% in hernia. Whereas in MGB, these things are totally missing. There is no report of internal hernia in the literature. And the structure rate is even less than 1%. Ruin Y leak rate in the revisions is more than four times. 10 year publication of leak comparing Ruin Y to MGB. MGB shows significant higher weight loss, three times less complications. Similar reports by Rutledge. So there's no doubt, it is showing good reports at 10 years, safety, efficacy, good sustained weight loss, explained by the post gastrectomy dumping kind of status, but there's a big fear of gastric cancer, by reflux. Look at the literature, 44 cases of cancer reported after bariatric operations, and these all come from bypass ruin by stomach, and sleeve and band and the ruin Y, but none has been reported from the MGB pouch as yet. And the incident reported of pyroflux is only 1 to 2 percent. We know Vigotomy pyroplasties, hundreds and thousands of these procedures were performed in the 1960s, and the bile is always there in the pre-pyloric stomach in such cases, but there is no report of cancer from the Vigotomy pyroplasty till date. How long we need to wait to see whether the bile causes cancer of the stomach or not? Bill of two, as old as the history of general surgery. If there is such a big risk of cancer after bill of two, then the gastroenterologist would be recommending screening of all the B2 patients. But this, even this has been tried and it has not proved fruitful. 63,000 patient years of follow-up, only 23 cancers reported after B2. It is equal to the incidence of cancer in general population. Endoscopy after B2, done up to 22 to 30 years, not rewarding. And the worst reports which say that after 25 years, there is some incidence of increase in the gastric cancer, only two cancers. We need to look yeah, at the statistics. Four slides you made means four it's slides. <laughs> we just need to look at the statistics. And it is not statistically significant. It's the chances of having cancer after MGB or B2 are even less than having the chances of cancer after getting a one CAT scan. And now we know the cost effectors of gastric cancer, H. pylori, free H. pylori. That's why the incidence of cancer is going down everywhere in the world. 
we know smoking and a healthy diet, fruits and vegetables, and that's how I finished. Morbid obesity is a difficult disease. No procedure is perfect. Revisions are bound to happen, but the procedure should be simple, safe, and effective. And all those surgeons who have experience in MGB, they were already performing other procedures. They have experience in other procedures. All the published data is showing good reports. Change is the law of nature. Please do not contempt prior to examination. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's just like uh, having an aeroplane crash. When we ride the aeroplane, they uh, take the consent. They say this is the exit window, emergency window. But we know what are the chances. So we need to explain to our patients that we need to study the statistics. And that's what we tell. And see the chances of internal hernia and chances of death after subacute ball obstruction. It's a part of the general surgery book now after the intestinal obstruction of the room and why. Dr. Kuli, we're not happy present. Dr. Rogers is also a consent of the patient. We're on the thousands, I think, 54 being gastric bypass for a prime colon consecutive series, you know. We were mentioning excess weight loss of, I think, 85 to 90 percent after five years. I just have that important question, you know. You just revised two patients for malnutrition. If you want to again look to the standard deviation and abortion curve of that type of and you've operated in the patients of PMI of 30 include that. Could you explain why you have such a low incidence of monitors? I cannot understand. If you look to some statistical data of a team of weight loss, not everybody has that exact You're going to have 100 percent. You're going to have to see. It's similar kind of reports coming from everywhere. And what I need to say is, if it is raining, it is raining. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, those things, yes, you're right, those things can be looked upon, like uh, if we think maybe after 30 years that there are some increased chances. So Could, can I speak on the cancer issue? Yeah. Let me have just a minute on cancer. Okay. So let me tell you that there is a 20-slide presentation on the Internet on this question. This is an indication of a lack of general surgery understanding. Forgive me. This is an indication that you have forgotten some basic general surgery. All right, first of all, you have an, an, you have an antral gastric cancer, a one centimeter prepyloric antral gastric cancer. In some of the highest areas of gastric cancer in the world, reported last year, there are a dozen studies of antrectomy and Bilroth II in those patients with gastric cancer chosen by oncologic surgeons. General oncologic surgeons, trauma surgeons routinely use Bilroth II to reconstruct the stomach and they do not have this kind of presentation or worry as we see from bariatric surgeons who have forgotten some of the basics of general surgery. Second of all, if you have a Bilroth II, ask your gastroenterologist should they have follow-up endoscopy? If there's a long-term risk, then what do you think your gastroenterologist will recommend? <coughs> follow-up endoscopy. That has been studied. It's general surgery information that even though we're bariatric surgeons, we should not forget. The answer is you do not recommend follow-up endoscopy for Bill Roth II patients because that study has been done. 
And the incidence, long term, is one or two cancers per 23,000 years of follow-up. Okay, there are studies in mice that show cancer after Bill Roth II. And there are studies in mice with cell phones that show cancer. What we want to know is 100 years of using the Bill Roth II, general surgeons, trauma surgeons, oncologic surgeons do not fear the Bill Roth II. They routinely use the Bill Roth II. The people who are frightened and been critics of the Bill Roth II and the mini gastric bypass have forgotten the basics of general surgery. Let me tell you something else, the difference between clinically important and statistically significant. As Dr. Kular pointed out, there is a risk of cancer after a CAT scan. There's an increased risk after a CAT scan. Two CAT scans in the studies that you quoted for the highest risk long term for Bill Roth II getting a gastric cancer are less than two CAT scans. Dr. Robert Dunlap, that's okay, but not the propaganda. As a German, I'm a bit afraid about this type of talking. <laughs> see a lot of this controversy. Can you comment on that? Oh, I just I uh, try to say what what thing that we know uh, with chronic stasis in the lab uh the or the other chronic uh, the stasis it causes the same uh, symptoms as chronic reflux and you can cause a parent or can, can and therefore the only contraindication for the sleeve at the moment is only the parent. Uh, but, 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 but no there's no other contraindication for Steve Gastric, not age, not BMI, nothing, only Barrett. But uh, the most, uh, in the chief of obesity surgery, he's reading a lot of publications, and maybe he has. Thank you, Scott Chakar from Boston. And, uh, I have a question and a comment. First of all, the question, educate me. We're talking about gastric cancer, but my understanding, the issue is in gastric cancer, it's esophageal cancer, and it's bile reflux into the esophagus. Secondly, my comment, the Bill Roth II is not a good comparison to the mini gastric bypass. The mini gastric bypass is a small, narrow pouch with not a lot of distance to the G junction. The Bill Roth II is a big stomach that can hold bile without it refluxing into the esophagus. So I think it's not a good comparison. But uh, again, my question is why are you talking so much about antral cancers? Because that's not the issue here. Thank you. Yeah, you're right. Uh, for this, we just need to look into the data, and uh, in the 17 year of MGB data, there is no report of esophageal cancer, although there are reports of esophageal cancer after a band, and two recently published reports after sleeve, and in the last uh, fourth consensus summit of sleeve, there is uh, some new report about the new onset acid reflux of the sleeve, which in some cases goes to the tune of 21%. So it's all mixed up. I would say we just need to look at the literature. We should not just speculate and imagine that if the pouch is small or big or what's going to happen. Just look at the literature and then we can wait for a couple of more years and make it more than 18 years. It's already 17 years of MGP. Maybe every clinic has internal guidelines. We have an international guidelines, we have European guidelines. Unfortunately, they have no guidelines of if so, our concrete statement is very old, so maybe it's a, 
the topic for the future to have also updated fiscal guidelines for indicating for general biometric surveys not only be my which can have procedures and can also further indicate our internal guidelines in our hospital is only can sometimes have the opportunity also to have other government bypass as a primary or secondary principle, but not in the age lower than four people. Because the time difference for the risk point for cancer is uh, 15, 20 years. Yeah? Uh, also, this is very uh, later. But maybe this is open. Here we have time to discuss. Oh, you only just. <laughs> <laughs> And Dr. Nusera was telling me in Italy it has been officially put in the list of procedures. Oh, the Germany is a medical loop since 10 years uh, official. Uh, we can uh, code it. It's, uh, it's not a problem of coding. Okay. But there are of late at the time, the percentage of uh, doing yes. uh, uh, Omega loop in uh, Germany is uh, maybe uh, 1.6%. I am Mario Muzella from Italy. Uh, I have the pleasure to coordinate the multicentric Italian study that Dr. Dilemans has just uh, cited. And uh, I want to place a, a peace message. I, I mean, we are probably making mistakes. We say we all. So, uh, MGB versus UNY. I, I ask you, but the if so, as the power to propose a multicentric randomizer trial, identifying 10 centers, 15 centers. This might be the answer. Yeah, so this, is, this, will, this uh, study is existing. Yeah? And you have to look at the, uh, the web and official things. Gerhard Prager, uh, this is the head of the, the chairman of the scientific committee of IFSO. Uh, of this uh, multi-center international study. Already somebody was presenting the 500 cases are already there. And this is case. running and everybody is showing here. better results. Yeah. Look at the website of uh, if so. Your are members, you have a right to do this and you have to, to join the international uh, studies. Yeah. Randomized, uh, randomized studies. Yes. The official from India. First of all, I must thank all of you. We really enjoyed this session, <laughs> the presentation and I must Thank Tom also for selecting this interesting topic. Two difficult scenarios which I come to my mind are, suppose you have an MGB done up, sleeve to MGB conversion, and there is weight regain, and the patient superobis, what would be the procedure of your choice? Number one, and if a sleeve to MGB leaks, then how would you treat it? Now, two questions, two scenarios. Number one, a patient with sleeve to mini gastric bypass. Yeah. Leaks okay. may be diagnosed fifth or sixth day. How would you treat? And the second one is sleeve to mini gastric bypass converted as a revision and there is weight regain after a few years. What would be the choice of procedure and how would you design? Uh, I, 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 I never saw a weight regain uh, after, after uh, uh, Omega loop. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think we have we have patients. Dr. Ratna has seen those patients. Uh, what would you do? I, would I you, had such a patient with Would you the, again go back to a gastric bypass? Is my question after all this debate. At two meters. At two meters. So still, that there is a role for gastric bypass after MGV. No, no, That's no, why no, it can no. increase the length. It, it can be revised. Divide the gastric J at two meters yeah. to the bypass. Two meters. Yes. yes. And and MGV still. MGV. 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 How would you treat a leak after? Uh, what we find is most, most leaks after MGB are at the gastrogenostomy. Uh, we recommend a very aggressive early process such that you don't get a CAT scan, don't get a white count, don't do anything. The patient doesn't look perfect, we re-explore and stick suture. And we don't recommend any other uh, uh, testing. We have about 10-20% uh, negative exploration, but that means the leaks are found early and they're easy to fix. If there is a leak at the gastro-J, on our revision, what we do, if it's a primary, we do the gastrogastrostomy and take down the gastro J. If it was a failed sleeve, I would put the stomach back to the stomach. But okay, for, for, all, for all, all problems, uh, don't make too much uh, up, uh, CD, whatever. Uh, if you have a problem, then you have to worry. Okay, so uh, what, what, uh, maybe we can ask, uh, who's, uh, maybe who's doing now uh, in general? We are doing omega loop bypass in this practice. But also, if you do it sometimes, oh, that's, that's the 
And who is doing mainly, uh, we have some people know here, we are doing mainly uh, Omega loop bypasses. So maybe it's, uh, maybe it's the same rate. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, any other uh, questions? We have, uh, we have time. Because then five minutes more and then we can go. I don't know why we are you should have given me five minutes more. <laughs> this was a good trick to get me up here, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a one-time reception. Uh,